Hey everyone, so here are a couple color charts that they're just solid colors and I'm uh, using them to make a new color wheel based on the colors that I have. And you'll notice that I've punched out little areas of each solid color. But, and this is uh, oil and coal wax medium. When I, when I made these, I had leftover color. And so what I did with the leftover color was I put them onto this ampersand panel. So here's the ampersand. Um, it's in caustic board. I don't know if you can read that on the back, but uh, I love this surface. It's wonderful. It comes pre just so you don't have to treat it with anything. But now, you know, like when I use it as a slot board, I always intend to come back into it, but because there was absolutely no thought, I was just trying to clean off my extra paint off my silicone tool. I just slapped it on here so I've got thick and thin and you know, every color under the rainbow. And you know, I would call I would consider this to be ugly. And the way that I define ugly is, you know, it's, it has more to do with than just saying, I don't like it. I try to push myself and say, well, what about it don't I like? And it's the fact that I would have to say, there are bits of saturation like here and here and here. Yes, there are some identifiable shapes. Like these shapes are actually quite defined. And I think I might've done that with a palette knife but there is a lot of texture and like all this orange here is also very saturated. So as a whole, I would say that there, it lacks harmony because there's so many disparate colors on here. After all, when I was trying to make my color wheel, I had all the different colors basically that uh, represent the different places on a color wheel. So that's what this is right now. It's kind of a mess. So. What I'm going to do is keep working into this. I've got my cold wax medium here. I've picked out some colors that I found in here that I remember I used. So obviously the cadmium orange and I've got Gamblin paints here. I saw a little bit of this quinacridone magenta here in the corner. There's not a lot of it, but I thought that might make kind of a nice glaze. So I grabbed that. I've got cadmium green, which is sort of a favorite color of mine. Then I've got, you know, black and white which I'm gonna make some grays with. I'm gonna to try to use up some of my uh, mostly used up ivory black. And I've got three brands here. Uh, I've got uh, Gamblin, I've got Graham, and I've got Williamsburg, but they're all like, you know, there's just a little bit left. So I'm gonna work on finishing those up. And then I've got some purple. So it's not, it's not a, um, it's still kind of a limited palette because I could be, uh, I could be having a lot more colors in here which were originally put on here, like here's permanent green, green light. And there are a lot of other colors in here that I just don't, didn't bring out. But I'm just gonna use these four colors then and start to mix up my palette. So hopefully this is enough of a surface to mix my paints on. And I'm just gonna start opening up my cold wax medium. So this is what cold wax medium looks like. For those of you who may not be familiar with it, it looks a lot like Crisco. If you do any cooking or baking, there it is. Whoops, put some out here. So here's my quantity of cold wax medium. And I do tend to add my one part to three part of Gelkid. So I kind of just do this. That's my three parts. Here's my Gelkid gel, my Gamblin Gelkid gel. I use the gel because it's about the same, um, it's a thicker consistency than the liquids. And then that's my one part to three parts, just approximate. So uh, when I work in cold wax medium, that's just the ratio that I use. And then I mix all this up. Mm -hmm. 
It does go a little bit yellowish because the Galka gel does have that yellowish cast to it and it's also a resin so you keep it at kind of a low ratio so that it doesn't, um, it has a potential to turn yellow on a painting so it's very good to keep that um, amount of Galkid in any mixture on the low end. So one part to three parts is quite low. Okay, so there's that puddle. Then I'm gonna put my white up here. I'll use my two bringer. It's kind of handy for not wasting paint. You just clamp on the bottom. I like the metal ringers better than the plastic. And just like a roll of, or a tube of um, toothpaste. Okay, let's squirt that out. I do like a lot of white. So again, I'm gonna approximate how much I think I'll need in one day. Cause I'm, I can save it overnight, but I can also try and approximate how much I'll need. So I'm gonna try and use up some of these paints here, these tubes. This one's kind of stuck. I kind of hold it down and then I hold, pinch that tight and then just never need too much black. Kind of lasts a long time. So a little bit goes a very long way. Okay, then all these little bits on here. Here's my, this is a 1980, a Gamblin 1980 student grade. It just is fine. It's got a little bit less pigment load, but a little bit less mixing strength, but not a big deal, especially because I might be doing some, a little bit of glazing on here. I might wait on the cadmium orange, I think. I'm gonna use some green. Get some interesting mixes with that. And I've got this quinacridone magenta, which might make a really pretty glaze. So again, glazing can happen at any time in a painting's journey. Set these aside. And then what I like to do right away is put a little, you know, even if I had at any point, whenever I squirt out new paint, just so I don't forget to add my cold wax medium. And you can add up to one to one. So you just kind of approximate it, like put this a little bit more. Maybe like that's about one to one. So I just put out that cold wax medium and Gal Kid mix next to the paint so that I don't forget to mix it in. The main reason is that it is, it's a medium and unlike traditional oils, if you add this to the paint, you don't have to worry about fat over lean when you're painting. It helps increase the flexibility and strength. There's a little bit of a satin finish that it gives to your paints and that's really nice. If you like that, some people prefer just the matte, but I kind of like just a little bit of satiny finish. Here's my cadmium green. And notice how I'm using a different palette knife for each color. That just saves time. That's really all it is. Here's my dioxazine purple, 1980 student grade paint. Still lots of pigment in there, so this is a transparent color. And how do I know that? You look on the back side of the tube and it will tell you whether it is um, transparent or not. It'll tell you the light fastness. Um, I think on the student grade, it doesn't tell you that, but as, as far as whether it's um, transparent or opaque, but on the professional grade, um, this one says opaque. So that might be one difference is that if it's not professional grade, they won't always tell you whether it's transparent or opaque. And here's my black. And I already know that I wanna uh, mix up some different values of gray, so um, let's put a little bit, a little bit, and then a little more, and mix all 
this in a little bit much, I think. There, take this back. So again, I'm just playing because this painting is really kind of a very <laughs> early stage painting, but I like to just keep playing until I have more things going on and try not to be in a hurry to finish it or anything like that. So um, I'm gonna mix up some grays here. That'll be a really dark gray. This will be more of a medium gray. And this should be a very light gray. Very little black in there. So I'll go from light to dark. And the other advantage of cold wax medium is that it has this buttery, luscious, frosting-like consistency. You can press things into it for texture. So if you love texture, it's a great medium. But again, the main thing is that you're not having to worry about fat over lean. And when you work with oils, if you work with traditional oils, you need to worry, think about that because otherwise you'll have cracking on your surface. So there's my light. It's going to be a darker gray. I'm just I'm mixing this on gray palette paper, but sometimes I use freezer paper, and I may need to um, have another a second sheet of this pretty soon because it's already getting a little crowded. You don't have to make up a huge pile because you can always mix more. be very dark. Lots of black, not as much white. So there's three values right there. Okay, so the first thing I kind of had an idea of doing was just to grab my Messermeister or a silicone tool. I may work in some collage into this too because a lot of people have had questions about collage material and how do you work it into a cold wax medium surface and um, <clears throat> maybe I'll just do that right now. I know that was a question. Whoops, that was my light. So um, here's some clip art and this came from a book and all I did was I took a photocopy of it. This is just eight and a half by 11 printer paper so it's pretty thin and if I wanted to incorporate some of this obviously this clip art is very different from the quality of this painting so it's huge contrast and if I cut it right along the line versus tearing it it's a very defined geometric shape that's something I don't have on this painting so I do like to work with extremes as I go letter S. A person asked whether, uh, one question was whether you collage something onto a dry painting. So this is a pretty dry painting versus on say a wet painting. So it's dry. See, There's no paint that comes off on my hand. It's been drying for many many days. So um, if I want to just put this on here with just cold wax medium, I could do that. Then you would just take Cold wax medium with Galkid, and I do think with Galkid is a little bit stronger than without due to that resin. And I can just put this on here. Now the paint is not wet, so that was her question. You know, does it matter if the paint is wet? Well, not really, because when you put collage material onto a cold wax medium and oil painting, what you're doing is you have to um, have something to be on the bottom of it and on the top of it that will hold it in place. So. I'm using just plain cold wax medium with Galkid, but if even if the paint were wet, I'd still use a little bit more cold wax medium um, and Galkid mixture. So now there's my collage piece. Yes, it has turned a little darker because it's soaked into the paper, but I didn't treat the paper with anything. I didn't put PVA size or anything. And you know, the, the story about that is that if it's collage paper, printer paper, um, in time, yeah, the paper could be subjected to some of the degradation from the acids in the oil, 
but the ink will be okay. So if the paper itself is not so important to you, then you don't have to worry about the PVA size. So now I'm gonna use this, but I want to dilute it a little bit more because I want it to be a glaze. So I'm actually just gonna put a little puddle here and then I'm gonna add some of this to, again, a glaze just means that you're, you know, really high transparency and uh, I'm gonna mix it right on the board. It's a very vibrant color. And that's way more than I need. Let's see what happens. So this is working as a glaze now because I want it to go over the entire painting. And you'll see how thinly uh, a layer, that a thin layer that I'm gonna be putting on this with this Messermeister. So again, here's that big puddle right in the middle, but you can really thin that out, see? And if I go over it just a few times, you can really see the impact. Again, you know, here's really thick, but with the Messermeister, you can easily peel that back and thin it out. And you know, each time you peel it back like this, just a little bit more and a little bit more, you can determine how thick or thin you want that. But just by doing this one thing, I'm sort of pulling this painting together Whereas before, like look at this high sat green, but when I put this color over it and then peel it back, you know, there are little, little, at least a little glaze over the surface and that does harmonize quite a bit. So I'm watching how thick it is and I can leave it thick if I want to, you know, that's kind of a choice that you make, but I like to turn the board around as I'm going and Again, each area of your painting you can treat differently. It's not like you have to treat them all the same. Like here, if I wanted to make marks with my Messermeister, I could just peel back, make stripes like this if I wanted to. And because this just doesn't set up quickly, you know, I can also just go like this and get rid of that again. So you have, there's a lot of working time with cold wax medium and oils. Not as much time with acrylic, but um, there's something really beautiful when you kind of think about thick versus thin. That's just related to pressure. Uh, getting some nice crisp edges like this with the Messermeister is very possible. So I'm kind of just observing and not thinking hard, I'm just still playing. But right away, this whole area is so much more harmonized than the area here that I haven't really, I haven't put any of that quinacridone magenta over here. Can, 